Hi, this is Dr. Habib. Recently, I exposed or presented the Annals of Internal Medicine, which showed that reducing the amount of red meat and processed meat didn't really reduce cardiac disease nor cancer by very much. So I just want to pick on the cardiac for now, and subsequently I'll talk about the cancer risks. So the, one of the positions I would try to say is that by lowering the red meat and the processed meat, we may not have been hitting the right target, the culprit because we're led to believe that cholesterol causes heart attacks. In fact, cholesterol does not cause heart disease. The fact is that you're gonna have doctors on this side of the fence, that side of the fence, arguing all day long because it'll be a never-ending argument, but this is the crux. Cholesterol doesn't cause the blockages. Blockages are made by dense lipoproteins. You've heard of lipoproteins because you've heard of LDL, low density lipoprotein. But of the LDL, there are dense ones and there are less dense ones. The dense ones create blockages. Of the lipoproteins, there's a special one, the number one culprit, it's lipoprotein little a. That is the most dense particle as of now, and that is the one that creates very resistant to problems with blockages. Resistant meaning that after conventional treatment of lowering the cholesterol, the blood pressure, the sugar, people still end up with lots of blockages requiring stents and worse still. As far as heart attack, the number one risk for heart attack is inflammation. And more important than the LDL is the ratio of your good and bad cholesterol or the ratio between the total cholesterol and your HDL is far more valuable than the amount of LDL because as we said, it's not about the amount of LDL, it's the quality, the size of the LDL molecule. So most people are afraid of heart attacks and the number one risk is inflammation, and of the people with blockages, the number one risk is dense particles, and neither one is affected by red meat or processed meat as of, uh, of the latest studies. In fact, those are affected more with multiple global factors. For example, let me give you an example. So when you have a high carbohydrate diet, your body will want to store that uh, excess carbs in the form of triglycerides, which is a type of cholesterol. What we know about triglyceride is that it is fundamental in reducing the size of the LDL. In other words, the triglyceride leaches the protein out of an LDL, a low density lipoprotein, making that LDL dense. So there's the connection between diet. So lowering the uh, meat consumption may not have lowered the cholesterol, or even if it lowered the cholesterol, won't alter the size of the LDL particle. But a diet that has low carbs will lower the triglyceride, which will alter the size of the LDL particle. That's as far as blockage. And as I said, the reason why heart disease, and there's a spectrum, so it's blockages, it's heart attacks, and anything in between, didn't reduce much by lowering the red meat because the culprit is inflammation. The culprit is dense molecules. The culprit is additional factors that need to be addressed. So as far as the study when it comes to lowering red meat and processed meat, it didn't lower the incidence of cardiac disease for the reasons I just said. Next, I want to talk about uh, how it off, uh, did not affect cancer. But what I want to finish off today is that there is a difference between good fat and bad fat that I personally would not feel good about eating an excessive amount of red meat because with the red meat, depending on how it was nurtured, it may have toxins in the fat. Let me give you an example. If I have a mother that's breastfeeding the child and I give the mother an antibiotic, what's the first question that mother's gonna ask? Is, is that medicine going to go in my breast milk? The answer is yes. So how do you believe that when you feed the animal badly, it's not in their milk? It's not in their, the meat product? So how you feed the animals has got to be uh, uh, a part of how healthy the animal is and how those foods and nutrients affect us once we consume that animal. So the quality of the products is important. And so sometimes when you feed the animals badly and you eat a lot of uh, uh, red meat, in that red meat we have a lot more fats and, and toxins are stored in the body fat, just like humans. When you are eating a heavy burden, and your liver's detoxifying it. It eliminates as much as it can, but whatever's left over, it's stored in the body fat to protect you. So it's not circulating around the body, affecting your brain and your organs. And in the same way, it happens with animals. You give them enough toxins, after they try to detoxify it, they start to store it in their body fat. If you eat their body fat, then you will get those toxins. God forbid you burn their body fat, it becomes toxic like 
combustion in cigarette smoke. Nicotine may be bad, but the smoking and the combustion creates the final oxidation. So in animal meat, if you're barbecuing toxic fats, you're going to get more toxins. But going back to good fats, bad fats, they're not all equal. So good fats may be monounsaturated fats, which come in the form of nuts, avocados, olive oil, polyunsaturated, so like omega-3, egg yolk, uh, organic, I mean, uh, yeah, organic eggs, omega-3 in seafood, the uh, whole versatile selection, the common one, salmon, tuna, but less common one, sardines, herring, mackerel, oily fishes, not the white fishes. And then I I I some of those uh, polyunsaturated fats come from your nuts and seeds as well, okay? So those are the good fats. Now, what about saturated fats? There's a good, bad, and the ugly. So the bad that I would say is that, just like I told you about the animal fat being bad, it depends on how the animal was raised. Is it organic? Is it exercising? Is it healthy, right? It will it impact the quality of the products that are made from that animal. In the same way, the saturated fatty acids, what we know from the studies is that it becomes toxic because the gut bacterial flora alters. You have an imbalance, and a balance, imbalance where Firmicutes is excessive and the bacteroides is deficient. It creates an environment to get inflammation. In fact, we know there is cell death at the liver level, a little bit like inflammation, but you have damage to the liver. If you have too many saturated fats, you can damage the cell membranes. Now, if you know that, then you know that taking a large amounts of saturated fatty acids cannot be good. By lowering it, you may not completely eradicate heart disease, but taking lower amounts is part of the strategy. What else is part of the strategy? It's to be able to put in the nutrients that your body needs, but also to avoid the things that drive uh, uh, the bad cholesterol particles and inflammation, like the carbohydrates. On the, the, on the good side of the saturated fatty acids, like butter. Butter is made of saturated fats, but it also has high amounts of fat-soluble vitamins. A, D, E, and K. But more importantly, it has large amounts of short-chain fatty acids, which then feed the microbes, which lower inflammation. In fact, it will lower the inflammation related to, say, even Crohn's disease. So there's the connection between lowering the meat and why that may not be the full answer, but lowering the meat content with healthy meats is OK, because sometimes some of those saturated fatty acids can actually be good for you if you know how to balance the good and bad fats. And then more important, you must make additional lifestyle changes like lowering the carb intake. And then we'll continue on other beneficial ways to lower cardiac risk as well as lowering cancer risk.